Uh, we need to understand that we are the most feared enemy that the United States has, and we have always been viewed as an enemy by this country. We need to understand uh, something called the Negro Question. Uh, the Negro Question is a intellectual uh, is a question that has been raised historically by white intellectuals over the last 300 or so years, where they ask themselves, "What should we do with these Negroes, or what should we do with these black folks?" They've attempted to answer that question in three different ways based on the nature of the American economy at a given point in time. From 1619 to 1865, this country had an agricultural economy. And so they satisfied the Negro question by having us work on plantations. Um, we, worked, we, we worked as what was called chattel slaves. Chattel means movable property. That meant we had the same style as a horse or a cow or a chicken. We could get bought, sold, trade, bartered, rented, gambled away, etc., etc. Um, around 1830 or so, we started to have a shift of the uh, whites in the north who had invested in the slave trade and made immense profits. And I wanted to uh, um, reshape the national economy from agriculture to industry. The whites in the south wanted to maintain the agricultural economy. And over the next 30 years, this disagreement brewed into a fight that we now know as a civil war. What we need to be clear on is that the Civil War was not fought for black people, it was fought over black people, like two kids fight over a toy. Who's going to profit from black people's labor, the white folks in the North or the white folks in the South? Whereas we all know the white folks in the North won, and so from 1865 to 1965, you had a steady stream of black people coming from the South to the North. If you live in Chicago, you don't even have to ask to know the majority of relatives come from Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, all right, black people in America have a very predictable migration pattern, so to speak. Um, black folks you find on the East Coast in places like New York and D.C. and so forth all come from North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. Black people you find in the Midwest come from, uh, um, I say, Alabama, Mississippi, uh, Georgia, Arkansas. People you find on the West Coast essentially. Uh, come from uh, Louisiana and Texas because it was easier for them to go west than to go north. Uh, but we had real predict predictable migration patterns. Anyway, um, 1865 to 1965, this country makes another major shift in its economy, this time going from industry, excuse me, going from uh, agriculture to industry. And so in an industrial economy, um, for example, my father was born in 1925. Uh, um, uh, People of his generation could drop out of high school, even grammar school, but still get them a good job at a steel mill or auto plant and usually earn enough money to buy a home and put their kids through college. Uh, that, however, has long gone because this country has made another major shift in its economy, this time going from industry to automation and service. Where the problem comes in is that 85% of black people in America will still be classified as semi-skilled or unskilled laborers in an economy that doesn't need semi-skilled or unskilled laborers. So the question becomes, what does America do with 45 million black people that they have always hated, never wanted, and now for the first time don't need? The answer to that question is genocide, which I already gave you the definition of. And so, you know, that is the unfortunate reality that we, we face with. How many people out there listening to this right now drank a can of pop last night? And of those who drank the can of pop, how many people put that empty can back in the fridge? You probably put it in a garbage can because the thing is, when you buy things and you use them, then you throw them away. Once they're used up, you throw them away. We were purchased. We were brought here to make America rich. We made them the richest nation in the world. We generated $4.1 trillion over that 246 years of slavery. Uh, that figure comes from the Pan-African Socialist Party. They say if you multiply the 4 billion black people in America at the end of chattel slavery times 246 years of slavery times six days a week times 12 hours a day at 1865 wages it would come out to a tune of 4.1 trillion dollars. And if you would see that all at one place in one time, it would look like 100,000 stacks of $1,000 bills that would stretch from the earth to the moon and back. That's how America got to be the richest nation in the world. That's how they got to be the industrial leaders of the world because they had the leisure time to, to, to concern themselves with other things when they didn't have to worry about working to feed themselves because we were doing that work. Um, uh, and so, you know, these are, this, these, this is the position that we find ourselves in that either we're going to change these things or we're going to um, uh, suffer as a result. Um, you have, when we talk about this whole question of genocide, this is expressed both in terms of 
individual violence and terrorism, whether we talk about things like the Atlanta child murders or uh, uh, black men in New York, the hangings that have gone on, uh, 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 burnings, uh, uh, beatings, you know, uh, uh, killing, so forth and so on, that happen all around on an individual basis, or we can talk about organized group terrorism and violence, where you're talking about thousands of, of white group, uh, hate groups and terrorist organizations uh, stockpiling weapons and preparing what for what they define as a race war. And so, um, uh, uh, you know, this is, you know, these are the things that we're faced with. Then you have to deal with institutionalized terrorism and violence, whether you're talking about police beatings and hangings or setups. Um, I mean, look at what's happening in, in Chicago Police Department, Philadelphia Police Department, FBI Crime Lab, uh, New York Police Department in terms of corruption and the kind of things that have come out over the last four or five years. Los Angeles Ramparts Division, so forth and so on. Um, when, you, when you deal with things like gun running on the part of policemen, all right? Uh, um, uh, I know a guy who had a federal firearms license for three or four years and um, BATF, which is the agency that regulates uh, federal firearms license holders, puts out a, an annual, a, a quarterly new, a report uh, and one section of this report deals with people who have abused their license and what happened to them. I guess it's to scare the rest of the people that got their license to make sure they do the right thing. In 1992, the four largest gun busts in the Chicago area were all current or former white Chicago policemen selling guns to black gangbangers. Um, you had a case out in, in Rosen where uh, uh, this guy was selling these guns to these gangbangers. You had a case out in Country Club Hills. This guy had something like 500 guns he's selling to gangbangers. You had a guy on the west side who was renting guns to gangbangers. He would rent you the gun to go kill somebody and then you bring the gun back to him so you can rent it out to somebody else. You had the father and son team up in Schaumburg who's converting AR-15s and MAC-10s from semi-auto to full auto and sold them to some Negroes, some Negro gangbangers who lived out in Rosen who came up to Schaumburg and one of them SUVs with the dark windows blasting the rap music and that's how them idiots got caught. Okay, and so I'm saying that, you know, this this is going on on the part of the police department. This, these guns being dumped in our neighborhoods uh, uh, are happening as a result of this. And I'm not anti-gun in any way, fashion, or form, but the way that they'll be used in our community is to terrorize us instead of being used against our enemies.